Welcome to On Health with Houston Methodist. I'm Zach Moore. I'm a photographer and editor here, and I've worked in multimedia and television for over 15 years, and I'm also a longtime podcaster. I'm Katie McCallum. I'm a former researcher turned health writer, mostly writing for our blog. And Katie, do you have an air fryer? Oh man, do I have an air fryer? Yes, (laughs) I do. We have some pretty strict rules in our household about very clean countertops. The only two things that are allowed on the countertops are one, the coffee maker, and two, the air fryer, because we use it literally every night. Truly the essentials of your kitchen. Yeah. Essentially, it is our oven at this point. Um, We rarely use our oven now. We just use our air fryer. Well, air fryers, they've become such a popular gift uh, for one. We got one as a wedding present. By far my favorite wedding present. Yeah, great gift. Yeah. I mean, because I I am not... You know, I'm not uh, Gordon Ramsay in the kitchen here, okay? So yeah. I, uh, I'm i always endeavoring to, I'm trying to become, it's important to my wife that I be- become a better cook Okay, I see what's happening here. Cook in yes. the kitchen. You need to be contributing more in the kitchen, it yes. sounds like. Okay. Yes, You know, I, I wash the dishes. I'm, I'm great it's with good. cleaning. Just the cooking, it's like, oh man, it's a lot yeah. of work. But I got to say, the more I get into it, the more fulfilling it is. Because yeah. you have a sense of accomplishment when you cook a meal. Yeah. And the air fryer makes your life a whole lot easier, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I was about to say, the air fryer takes a lot of the complication out. Essentially, you chop stuff and toss it in seasonings and throw it in there. I bet a lot of people have been getting them um, after the holiday season. Yeah, and if you're looking at this new item in a box and wondering what to do with it, because that's the intimidating factor for somebody like me who's like, I don't know, I don't really cook, and I, where do I start? Oh my gosh, what do I do? We're going to answer those questions for you. Yeah, and I think, too, a question people might have, people who don't love air fryers as much as I myself do. I know when I was trying to convince my parents to get one, my mom, I think there were some conversations of like, well, is it really healthier? Is the food in it any healthier? Yes, yes. And it's like, okay, you know, I don't have perhaps the right answer to that, but I can tell you that it's much more convenient. We use ours for everything. I mean, it's either being used for our protein or veggies every night. So if we're doing like chicken thighs on the stove, that means broccoli's in the air fryer. Or if we're air frying fish, that means Brussels sprouts are on the stove. So when I say we use it every night, I literally am saying we use our air fryer every single night. I love it. And you talked to one of our dietitians about air fryers, right, Zach? I did. Amanda Beaver is a wellness dietitian here at Houston Methodist. And we had a great discussion about sort of the science behind an air fryer. Is it really healthier than cooking in in more Mm. quote-unquote traditional ways? Better be. Yeah. (laughs) Well, uh, as all things in life, it's a nuanced answer. Mm, Okay. You have to follow some recipes, obviously. There is some structure to it. It's not all just set it and forget it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's it's not a magic box. You just put ingredients in it. I don't know. Maybe it is. I would almost (laughs) say it's a magic box. I'm being, I'm exaggerating, but that's how much I love it. It feels like a magic box to me sometimes. Well, we get into the science behind the magic in our conversation here. So I love uh, that. Looking forward to sharing the facts about air fryers with you. Let's get into it. We're here with Amanda Beaver, a registered dietitian here at Houston Methodist. Hi, Amanda. Hello. Thanks for being with us today. Of course. Thank you. So air fryers. They seem to be a very trendy item these days. Everybody's talking about how they got one as a present or, you know, it's it's a real prominent piece of people's kitchen these days. I, I, I found it. Have you found the same thing about mm-hmm. air fryers? Definitely. So I feel like they became really popular after like 2015. Okay. I first heard of them in 2017 when I was reading like a food and nutrition magazine um, and actually got one as a graduation present okay. um, after I finished my master's degree and have been loving it ever since. So I hear a lot from people that they might get it for their birthday or for another holiday and then maybe they open it up and put it on their counter but they don't actually use it and mm-hmm. I feel like those of us who kind of have it but aren't using it are really missing out on some really easy and tasty food that they could be making with it. Okay great no I have one as well uh, me and my wife received one as a wedding present and we immediately started using it and I gotta say it's probably my favorite wedding present. <laughs> it has the most it. practical uh, usage and no I, I really enjoy it and you know, I'm not like Mr. Chef over here c- uh-huh. cooking all the time in the kitchen. I'm trying to get better. I don't know. I, I just think it's a very convenient tool that can make a lot of great food for you. And I guess the main thing we'll be talking about today is health-wise. I believe right. there's a perception that, oh, it's healthy. I cooked it in the air fryer. Right. And that may or may not be the case. But let, let's take a step back before we really dive into the air fryer. Let's talk about what separates the way an air fryer cooks something than the way... A grease fryer for like the other end of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. Kind of, kind of. What are the differences that what what does an air fryer do to your food? 
So the air fryer is very different in that it has a heating element and a fan that kind of blows the hot air around the food. So it can really circulate around the food and brown it and cook it efficiently and quickly. Whereas an oven, the heating element is at the bottom and the heat kind of rises up and cooks the food that way. And the oven, as you know, has to preheat and it's a pretty big space. So that takes a decent amount of time for it to heat up. Um, and it's not going to brown the food as quickly and cook it as quickly. So it's going to take longer. And then a deep fat fryer cooks the food in very hot oil. So oil is an excellent heat conductor and that allows the food to brown really quickly and cook really quickly. However, it does soak up some of that oil as it is deep frying. You know, you mentioned the not preheating things. That kind of threw me for a loop when I first got our air fryer because I plug it in and I'm like, all right, I'm going to set it to this temperature. And then I just press go and then it starts and there's no there's no preheating sequence to it which is which right. is great which saves time right uh, and you know you mentioned oil and and speaking of oil i think oil is one of those things that i mean it's people use it a lot in food yeah and at probably the most common oil is is probably the uh olive oil mm -hmm. uh, but there's also you know coconut oil other kinds of oil mm -hmm. when you're even beyond just the air fryer i guess but like when you're cooking in general what is the healthiest oil you should be using this is a question that I get asked a lot as a registered dietitian. So I think it really depends on what you're cooking. Um, kind of the two top ones that I recommend that people cook with are extra virgin olive oil and avocado oil. And the reason for that is that they're very rich in monounsaturated fats, which are a type of fat that have been shown to help improve LDL cholesterol and be really good for our heart health. Uh, not to mention that, but extra virgin olive oil also has poly phenols in it, um, which can provide extra health benefits. Um, there is some concern with, okay, maybe olive oil might not be good for high heat cooking, but studies have shown that the polyphenols and antioxidants found in extra virgin olive oil might help protect it and help keep it safer at higher temperatures. So I would recommend if it's like if you're cooking in the air fryer at 400 or less, olive oil is perfectly fine to use. Um, and same with avocado oil. If you're going to be cooking something hotter than that, like 450, 500, I would do a avocado oil that is safe to higher temperatures. And a lot of times the label will say. And then another option too, if if you're cooking a dish that's maybe South Asian or Southeast Asian, peanut oil is a really good one because okay. it also has a decent amount of monounsaturated fats, which are those really good heart healthy ones. Um, and it has a very neutral taste and it's pretty stable at higher temperatures. So that's kind of another good one uh, to have. And my favorite kind of application of these oils for the air fryer is to use a oil sprayer. I have one that's refillable and I kind of just spray it on the food to give it a nice even coating. And that way, you know, all of the food gets coated evenly instead of just kind of pouring it on and hoping that it all. Yeah, that's usually what I do. So yeah. that I am, when we're done here, I'm going to go look up an oil sprayer. Yeah. So, so, so this is, you buy the oil in, in the normal package you would come in and then you, you buy a sprayer and pour that oil into the sprayer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they sell sprayers and misters that are specially designed for this. Okay. Uh, but they they also do sell uh, sprayers at the grocery store that are filled with extra virgin olive oil or avocado oil that you don't necessarily need that for. Um, oh, so okay. they sell those as well. Uh, but it's nice having one that you can refill because you can pick which oil you put in there um, and which one you add to the food. That's great. I had no idea that those existed. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that are those new? I, I think they've become a lot more popular as people are looking into reusable options, mm -hmm. but I also feel like it's a little more cost effective too. The history of the air fryer goes back further than you might think. The seed of the idea was devised by William L. Maxson of the W. L. Maxson Corporation who, when serving meals to servicemen during World War II, invented the precursor to the modern frozen TV dinner. This was to replace the cold meals and sandwiches that were typically served. To cook them, Maxson built an oven of aluminum and steel with a 120 volt DC motor powered by gas, kerosene, or electricity. He called it the whirlwind oven. Its secret, 
a fan installed in the back of the oven, which forced hot air directly around the food. This evolved into the forced convection technology that is still used in air fryers today. By the late 1940s, the whirlwind oven gave way to the microwave. But many companies continued to build on the idea, and in the late 1960s, the first full-size convection oven was made available to the public for household use. This continued throughout the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, but it was not until the late 1990s and early 2000s until they truly began to catch on with the public at large. In 2010, Philips coined the now generic term air fryer and released the Philips air fryer, the first iteration of what we know today. Launching at an electronics fair in Berlin, it quickly caught on in Western Europe, and by 2015, the air fryer became the number one brand for low-fat fryers across the world. So in my research about this, I saw the word acrylamide a lot. Mm -hmm. Why don't you explain to us what that is? Yes. So acrylamide is a chemical compound that is formed when certain foods are cooked. So it is basically a chemical reaction that takes place in food that has carbohydrates and some protein in it. And it it tends to uh, be found in higher amounts in foods that have been cooked for long periods of time or at higher temperatures. And it's especially higher in foods like potato chips, French fries, tater tots, uh, cookies, toast, even coffee. Anything that's kind of getting toasted and browned will have some of these acrylamide compounds. Um, but the next question is kind of like, okay, so some of these foods have acrylamides in them. Mm -hmm. uh, is that actually bad for me? So when we look at the research, animal studies have shown that high amounts of acrylamides do increase cancer in the animal models and animal studies. But when we look at human studies, the evidence is very mixed. So there uh, has been some studies that show the people who are eating the most acrylamides compared to those who are eating the least might have some increased risk of certain types of cancers, but then other studies don't show this. So we're still kind of figuring out what the impact is. And the FDA has issued some statements on acrylamide, and they've said, don't worry about it too much because the studies are so mixed, and just try to eat a varied diet that has fruits and vegetables and proteins, um, uh, basically not to worry about it too much. But for those of you who are worried, uh, or maybe you have a history of cancer, just maybe don't eat a bunch of potato chips and french fries. <laughs> Probably good advice across the board. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So th does air frying help with that at all? Versus traditionally cooking. Yeah. So it's going to happen if things are fried, baked, put in the toaster oven, put in the deep fat fryer. So any kind of roasting, baking is going to produce these compounds to some extent. But it's going to be lower in the air fryer than in deep fat frying. So there was a study that showed that chicken nuggets that had a breaded coating had less acrylamide when they were prepared in the air fryer versus when they were prepared in a deep fat fryer. So that's one benefit of cooking in the air fryer. Okay. So following up that point, mm -hmm. I think there's probably a perception that, hey, I cooked it in the air fryer, it's healthier. Mm -hmm. And that isn't necessarily the case, is it? Yeah, so I think that it really comes down to what you're putting in the air fryer. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I commonly see with people is um, buying the frozen french fries, frozen chicken nuggets that have that breading on it, and then cooking it in the air fryer. And if you've ever done this before, it tastes pretty dang good. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> um, but those those frozen french fries, frozen chicken nuggets, frozen uh, popcorn shrimp, those have been par fried or pre fried before they're packaged and go on the shelves at the grocery store. So even though we're cooking them in the air fryer and we're not cooking them in a deep fat fryer, they are still pre fried in a deep fat fryer. So while they might be a little healthier than getting french fries or chicken nuggets from a fast food, Food restaurant, it's still French fries and chicken nuggets okay. that have been fried. So I would save those kinds of foods for special occasions. You know, maybe have that 
be your Friday tradition, if you want to do some French fries in your air fryer, that's totally fine, but not an everyday thing. Mm -hmm. No, that, that's just a general rule of thumb. That makes sense. Uh, we, we made okra not too long ago mm -hmm. in the air fryer. That was pretty good. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's a great method for cooking okra because it's a dry heat method and it helps keep it from getting kind of as slimy and stuff like that. Yeah. So. Because like I've, I've, I've always like making like, you know, potatoes, like roasted mm -hmm. potatoes, but mm -hmm. it's so hard to get them crispy, right? In traditional yes. ovens. And I found in the air fryer, I'm like, oh, I can really get this like the way it tastes in a restaurant, <laughs> you know? Right. Right. And I think that's one of the best applications of the air fryer and a way to create food that is pretty nutritious. So the air fryer can can act just like an oven, but in my opinion, it kind of takes things like roasted potatoes or broccoli or Brussels sprouts, and those are very healthy foods, and it does brown them nicely and cook them really well. So in my opinion, the air fryer can be a great tool to get more of those nutritious foods into your diet in a way that's going to taste really good. That's great. That's great. And you know, I've learned a lot of vocabulary mm -hmm. uh, in my research for this. Like I mentioned the term earlier. Now, also came across a couple of terms, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons mm -hmm. and heterocyclic amines. Yes. What are they and what are their health risks? Yes. So these are quite a mouthful. And yes. They, <laughs> yeah. And they sound really scientific too. So you're probably hearing this term and you're like, uh, this is way too sciencey. I've never heard of that before. Um, and this is a compound that is different than the acrylamides that we were talking about earlier. So uh, heterocyclic amines and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons are two different types of compounds that are formed when meat is cooked. So any kind of muscular tissue like beef, pork, chicken, fish will produce these compounds to some extent when they're cooked at high heat or cooked for long time periods. So those are kind of the two key factors, high heat and cooking for long time periods. And just like with the acrylamides, when we look at these two compounds in animal studies, high intakes of these compounds do cause cancer in animals. However, when we look at the studies with humans, it's a little bit more ambiguous, and we're still trying to figure out if these increase human cancer risk. However, when we look to the major cancer organizations that give us guidelines on what we should be eating for preventing cancer, they do have a little bit more of caution to take uh, with these compounds. So we see higher amounts of these compounds develop when meats are seared or cooked for long periods of time or at higher temperatures. And we'll see higher amounts of these compounds when we have a crust on the meats or they're getting those grill marks uh, or they're blackened. So what you can do about this is just not overcook your meat and try to avoid situations where you're getting that crust and that blackened meat because you could see higher amounts of these potentially carcinogenic compounds. So when we look at studies with air fryers, though, when we compare the air fried chicken tenders versus the deep fat fried chicken tenders, the air fried ones have less of these detrimental compounds. So that's yet another potential benefit of the air fryer versus grilling or cooking in the deep fat fryer. Wow. So I, my whole life, I've thought, oh, well done is quote unquote better for you because there's less of a risk of, you know, uh, salmonella or right. you know, fill in the blank of a right. disease you can get from undercooked meat. That's true in some categories, but not mm -hmm. necessarily in others is what you're saying. Right. So there's definitely when we undercook meat, there is a high risk of food poisoning. So what I recommend people do for that is cook the food to the proper temperature. And this is not just for like health reasons. This is also for taste reasons, too, because mm. when we overcook meat, it really dries out. But if we cook it to the proper temperature, it's going to stay a lot more tender, and we might also get less of these potentially detrimental compounds too. So the temperature to cook to depends on what you're cooking. So if it's fish, the recommendation is to cook it to 145. If it's chicken, the recommendation is to cook it to 165. If 
it's pork. The recommendation is to cook it to 145 and have a three minute rest time. So it depends on what you're cooking. And that is going to help you make sure that you have really tender, moist meat or chicken or fish, but you're also avoiding some of these potential detrimental compounds too. And you can feel really good knowing, hey, I cooked this chicken to 165, so I know I killed the bacteria and I know it's safe to eat, but it's also going to taste good too. So get a instant read thermometer that you can use to cook your chicken and your fish and your meat, and it's going to taste better and you're just going to feel better about it. Yeah, we have one where you can cycle through like what the kind of meat is. Mm-hmm. And to me, who is, again, kind of a novice in the uh-huh. kitchen, the grand scheme of things, very helpful. I'm yeah. like, okay, fish, this temperature of pork, et cetera, et cetera. So you know that because they're all, as you said, they're right. all different temperatures. So you can't necessarily use the same one for all the meat. So that, yeah, right. absolutely. That, that's definitely the way to go. Yeah. So. Yeah. Or you could even just print a little page out from the FDA's website or the Frame USDA's that, website. The <laughs> yeah. Put it on your refrigerator. I actually have that because I forget these numbers sometimes too. Mm-hmm. And I noticed this yesterday. I actually cooked some fish in my air fryer yesterday and I took it out and checked the temperature and it was actually at 200. So I really overcooked that fish. <laughs> Kind of dry. <laughs> right. And I noticed it when I was eating it. But if I had cooked it to the proper temperature, it would have tasted so much better. And it would potentially have less of these potentially negative compounds in it, too. You know, side note, fish, right? It's got this reputation. leaves a smell, right? Mm-hmm. Does the air fryer help that at all? You know, I've noticed that it does. So I've noticed that the air fryer- Another point for the air fryer, everyone. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I've noticed that there's less smells for things like fish or bacon uh, compared to cooking it in the microwave or compared to cooking bacon, for example, on a stovetop. Now, convection ovens like air fryers, Mm -hmm. I've read that they preserve nutrients better than other more traditional cooking methods. Is that correct? So the preservation of nutrients will definitely really depend on the cooking method. And I like to tell my patients not to get too caught up in worrying about if the cooking method is destroying the nutrients or not. Uh, So to kind of give you a little bit of background, vitamin C will be destroyed upon heating and cooking of any method, whether it's microwaving, boiling, air frying, roasting. And so... That's one vitamin that's really not going to be preserved when you cook it, no matter what. Um, Whereas some of the other cooking modalities, for example, when you boil food, some of the nutrients do get kind of leached into the cooking water. Whereas with air frying, you don't have a cooking liquid where the nutrients are kind of leaching into it. So that is one benefit. Some of the mineral content and other vitamins will be preserved if you're not um, cooking it in a liquid. However, though, because some of the vitamins are going to get destroyed no matter what when we cook, um, some of the vitamins are actually absorbed better upon cooking. So for this reason, I tell people to do a mix in their diet of both cooked veggies as well as uncooked veggies to get the full complement of nutrients. Because when we eat raw veggies, we're probably going to get be able to absorb and get a lot more vitamin C. Whereas when we cook the veggies, for example, we won't be getting quite as much. So I would just include a mix in your diet and just not worry too much about killing nutrients or anything like that. Up after the break, I'm going to share some more tips and recipes you can use with your air fryer. From annual checkups to managing chronic conditions, your health care should be personalized to you. At Houston Methodist, Our primary care doctors provide customized care for you and your family with more than 40 convenient locations across Greater Houston. We offer a variety of ways to get care, from in-person and virtual appointments to same-day visits when you're sick. Choose your doctor and schedule online at houstonmethodist.org slash stay healthy. Houston Methodist, leading medicine. And we're back with Amanda Beaver. What are some good, healthy tasty meals that you can make in this air fryer? Oh my gosh, so many things. So I love this question because last year my 
oven actually broke and I had to rely completely on my air fryer to cook my food. And I actually had a lot of fun with this because I really learned to cook almost everything in the air fryer. And you can really cook all the different proteins, all the different veggies in it. Uh, some of my kind of favorite ones to recommend to patients are uh, fish because fish is, we know, so nutritious for us. So you can buy fillets of fish, either frozen or fresh. Um, I actually did it with frozen fish last night because it's so convenient and you don't have to worry about the fish going bad in your refrigerator if right. you're buying it frozen anyways. Um, so you're going to add the fish to your air fryer. If it's frozen, you're going to let it thaw for maybe two, three minutes. And then you're going to spray it with a little bit of olive oil or avocado oil, sprinkle on some salt and pepper, and maybe your favorite seasoning blend. So this is a time to really utilize the spices and seasoning mixes that you have in the back of your spice cabinet that you're probably not using. So open that up for me and dig out some ones that maybe you know you really like, but you haven't used in a while. So what that could look like is maybe a Greek chicken or maybe a Cajun tilapia or maybe even a everything but the bagel uh, roasted broccoli. So you can really get creative with whatever blends you have at home. I would say that fish is probably one of my favorite things to cook with it. You can also do shrimp, either from fresh or frozen, and then use that for shrimp tacos or fajitas. Uh, another great one to do is chicken. I feel like chicken thighs come out a lot better than chicken breasts just because thighs tend to be a little bit more tender than mm. chicken breast does. And it takes about 30 minutes to cook. And again, you can season it uh, with whatever favorite seasonings you have. And... Lastly, uh, we've got the whole category of veggies. So this is where I feel like the air fryer really shines because veggies are an area where a lot of people struggle with their nutrition. So my top recommendation for my busy patients is to buy the veggies pre-chopped at the grocery store. So think pre-chopped broccoli, pre-chopped cauliflower, uh, the Brussels sprouts, the pre-chopped sweet potato or pre-chopped butternut squash. I, I like that because that saves a lot of time because that's like half, yes. half the battle of cooking is like you take it out, you got to chop it up and I think it's worth a little extra cost to save the convenience on that, this is my, in my opinion anyway. Definitely, definitely. And if that's going to make the difference between having to go out to eat to get something that's more expensive and probably less nutritious, you know, I think it's a win-win. Mm -hmm. So you can literally just take that bag of pre-chopped veggies, dump it straight in the air fryer, season it with uh, some olive oil or avocado oil, salt and pepper and whatever other seasoning you like, and then cook it for about eight minutes if it's like for example maybe very thin pieces of asparagus or tinier broccoli florets or for up to 20 minutes if it's like whole brussels sprouts or maybe like a potato will take a little longer too so i love this because i feel like it's great to have the air fryer going um and cooking your food while your hands are free. I love that as well. <laughs> yeah, you can be prepping for work the next day. You can be just decompressing while the air fryer is doing the work for you. Yeah, and, and just practically speaking, that's what I found. Like It's a less hands-on mm -hmm. uh, style of cooking, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not like a, a cheat code or anything. You, you put a little effort into the beginning, but once you get it all set up, you can kind of yeah. sit it and forget it, so to speak, and then come back to it when the alarm goes off and you're good. As, as opposed to getting around the oven, you got to right. leave that flame unattended. You're there mixing right. things up and stuff. So just on a practical level like that, I, I, I connect with that yeah. as well. Definitely, definitely. One thing that can kind of help with the cooking process and just make the veggies taste better is to avoid overcrowding the air fryer because if everything's kind of sitting on top of each other, then it doesn't get that good air circulation around the food that helps cook it and brown it and make it taste good. So just avoid overfilling it and that's going to make it taste better. Um, and then another tip too is halfway through the cooking process, just give the basket a little shake if it's something like veggies or shrimp. Um, that's not necessary. If it's like a piece of fish, you can just leave it, you know, that side down the entire time. Mm -hmm. 
I, I've noticed that as well. And in a lot of the recipes I've been looking up, it's like, okay, you cook it for 10 minutes, take it out, shake it up, mm-hmm. put it back in. Mm-hmm. And I've I've experienced the difference, right? I've, mm-hmm. Like I mentioned earlier, like I'm th- in that quest for the crispy potatoes. Yeah. Um, the, the less they're in there, like don't overstuff it. And then mm-hmm. you, if you mix it up a little bit, you're going to be able to find that that uh, that ideal crispiness. Right, right, right. And one thing that you can even do too is on once half the air fryer have the protein. So for example, a piece of fish. And on the other half, you can put uh, some pre-chopped broccoli or pre-chopped butternut squash or whatever it is that you like. And that way you've got your protein and your veg going literally at the same time. Um, so to me, that's like a meal in one pot almost yeah um and it's super simple so now i didn't hear you mention cauliflower mm-hmm. uh, cauliflower seems to be you know much like the air fryer a very uh-huh. you know a trendy <laughs> vegetable right now whenever i pro- try to be healthy like oh i'll have the cauliflower uh bread for the pizza yes. i'll have the cauliflower on the side but the, is that mm-hmm. true like is cauliflower right up there is, is it the cauliflower the air fryer of the vegetable world so i guess is my question yes i would definitely say that we kind of go through these trends with food right mm-hmm. i feel like kale had a moment yes. and then it was brussels sprouts and then cauliflower so we have these kind of just we get kind of obsessed with these foods and there's good reason so all three of those foods are actually in the brassica family which do have a particular benefit and might be particularly beneficial. Um, uh, Some studies have shown that they might lower inflammatory markers and other health metrics. So there's definitely a good reason that these are taking the spotlight. One really popular method for cooking cauliflower is to do cauliflower style wings, Mm. uh, which is basically where you cook the, the cauliflower in the air fryer and then you can toss it with wing sauce. And that is one way to kind of make it taste good and maybe, you know, make something a little special for yourself. One thing, if that doesn't sound very good to you, is you actually can cook wings in the air fryer and make them pretty decently healthy too. So this is something that my husband actually started doing. He was going to get wings weekly um, at, you know, your typical wing place and was having some high blood pressure. And so we had to kind of take it back a little bit. Mm -hmm. And we started doing the wings in the air fryer. Um, All you need to do is buy the wings at the grocery store, separate the flat from uh, the wing. You can use some kitchen shears and then put it in the air fryer. You can add a little bit of spray it with a little bit of oil, sprinkle on a little bit of garlic powder cook it for about 27 minutes or so, and then pull it out. And there you've got your wings that are really well cooked and then just toss it with a little bit of sauce. And there you have a wing that's going to be way lower in sodium and way lower in, you know, those fats from the deep fat fryer. Yeah. No, and I think that's really great takeaways that, you know, when you go out to eat, you you don't don't really know what exactly is going Mm -hmm. on back in the kitchen. So if you're Mm -hmm. looking to really tighten the screws on your health and, and, and your intake, you know, cooking it at home mm-hmm. is a smarter move. It's probably definitely. going to be cheaper, mm-hmm. definitely going to be healthier if, you know, if you're making the right choices mm-hmm. and, you know, and with something like air fryer, a lot more convenient. Right. Uh, so and for right. someone like me, that's the number one. <laughs> like, and that's the trap of you going out to eat. Like, oh, I'm so busy. Like, I don't have time. Like, it would right. be nice to have a home cooked meal, but I'll just go here and you're going to spend a lot of money and it's probably not going to be <laughs> right. that healthy. Right. Exactly. And I think that also really speaks to uh, to the air fryer being time effective too. So because hot air is circulating around the food, it takes less time to cook. So to kind of give you an example, if I'm roasting broccoli florets, it'll probably take about 30 minutes in a traditional oven. But if I'm cooking in the air fryer, I typically cook it for about 10 minutes. So that's a big time savings. So it's really good for people who are short on time, who are trying to get these nutritious foods into their diet. So it's a time saver. And it also is going to be more nutritious than going out to eat. And the third benefit that I didn't mention yet either is it uses less electricity than the oven does. So yet another benefit. There you go. Across the board. So it sounds like the air fryer is a win. Yes. So just a few takeaways as we wrap up here. Don't overcook Mm -hmm. in the air fryer. Mm -hmm. Either olive oil 
or avocado oil mm -hmm. and spray it. Mm -hmm. Don't pour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> spray on there. It's going to distribute better and also be healthier. Mm -hmm. Open up that spice rack or the back of the, mm -hmm. the pantry. Pull out those spices that you have and you're like, why do I still have this? Now's the time. And don't fry already pre-fried mm -hmm. things such as the vegetables and stuff you mentioned before. Yeah. So I think that those are three kind of really good take-home messages. The spray oils will be really good for giving the food a nice even coat that won't overdo it. The spices are what are going to make your food taste really good so you actually enjoy eating it. And then um, – not doing too many of the pre-fried frozen french fries or nuggets um, is another tip too. And it's not that you have to completely avoid them, just maybe keep them for a special occasion. Well, I'm going to go home and uh, fire up the air fryer later. <laughs> so thank you for all these great tips. My pleasure. Zach, now that you've had an air fryer for a little while and after talking to Amanda, two questions. What's your favorite thing you've cooked already and what's something you want to cook next? You know, I mentioned it in my conversation with Amanda about okra, making okra fries. I was going to say, so this was fried okra you, you guys well, were talking about. Well, not fried okra, but okra oh. fries. You see, it's something uh, oh. that I encountered over in uh, Europe when I was there recently at uh, an Indian restaurants. They have okra fries, and they're like nice. French fries, but made out of okra. I mean, they're not the you know not the healthiest thing in the world, I guess. Because <laughs> healthier in the air fryer, maybe they're kind healthier of in the air fryer, like, right? Yeah. That's the whole point. But it's very unique taste, very crunchy, that kind of thing. And that's 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 what I love doing, like because I'm always want to like replicate kind of like the a certain like crunchiness to certain things like Brussels sprouts, things like that, that you get in restaurants that are just so hard to get at home Yeah, because your ovens aren't like their ovens and you, know, you wash vegetables. So they've got a moisture to them and that soaks in and all that stuff. But in an air fryer, you can really get that crispiness that you really have to cook at a low temperature for a long time in a conventional oven. And you probably aren't going to have time to do that on a pretty regular basis. So you got to compromise. So to me, that's been the best thing so far. My favorite thing with the, to do with the air fryer is I love fish. I feel like I've never really been successful at making fish in the oven. It always dries out and it's not as good. Like salmon dries out. I feel like fish is delicious in the air fryer. Um, if you haven't tried it, I recommend you try it. I you just I like I love catfish, so I'll just buy catfish fillets and put some blackening seasoning. You put it in the air fryer for like 17 minutes, and you you don't even really have to flip it. I flip it just because it cooks it perfectly. Um, like restaurant perfectly. Really? And so I've gone from, you know, I would only cook fish periodically because I was, I would always mess it up and it's kind of expensive. And so then you like <laughs> overcook it and it's gross. And right. you're like, okay, air fryer is foolproof for fish. That's probably my absolute favorite thing to do just based off of what I have trouble with otherwise. But also essentially any vegetable ever. I'll just toss in olive oil and like garlic powder, onion powder, black pepper and salt and throw it in the air fryer and it's delicious. Olive oil. Very good. That or avocado oil, those should be your two to use. I'm glad you asked her about that. It's funny, I, I had talked to her about that in a blog post previously, and I was kind of blown away by breaking down the oils and then hearing that olive oil really is usually the, the one she recommends most. Um, but I loved the tip of if over 400 degrees, use avocado oil. Um, I didn't know about that, so mm -hmm. I'll, I'll definitely be doing that. Yeah, and I still need to get that spray bottle for oil that she I mentioned. Know. That's such a like a genius tool that I'm I'm shocked that it's not just standard kitchen issue, right? Yeah, I've seen them. I always thought it might be hard to clean, but then I'm probably just overthinking that. Well, yeah, I mean you're always gonna have oil in it. Like right. you're not gonna mix yeah. it in with oh, and put some water in here. It's the microbiologist <laughs> the to me, Zach. It's just hard for me <laughs> to like not have things cleaned. Right. But I mean, like you said, it's oil, so it's probably fine. And they probably do clean really well. It's just in my mind, I'm always like, oh, that sounds like a mess, but. The way she explained it and described it, it, it does sound like a really helpful tool for the air fryer specifically because the whole point is you don't want to be – you don't need things loaded down with oil to get crispy. And I think that's the what the air fryer does so perfectly. And um, spraying on oil is enough. It still gets crispy, and I think that's great. And another thing about the air fryer is reheating leftovers. When you heat stuff up in the microwave – it's soggy, like especially egg rolls. Like I found that you can reheat egg rolls in an air fryer. Was this after our, our potluck last week? This you was not after that. Reheating egg rolls? <laughs> I ate those as soon as I got home. Okay. But... <laughs> okay. I did reheat some of my egg rolls in the microwave. And yeah, it's not as delicious. In the air fryer, reheating those egg rolls would have been delicious. Yeah, and again, that can keep the help get crispy again. Because mm -hmm. it's all about mm -hmm. how the heat directs on the food and all that sort of thing. So those are the things that have stuck out to me using air fryer so far. And I, I'm looking forward to, to continuing my, my repertoire in the kitchen with yeah. this air fryer. I'm excited for you and Sarah. I think this is great. Good. Okay. We'll have to have you all over and, and you can well, eat yep. some air fryer some practice, dinner with us. <laughs> get some practice on your belt, I'm sure. <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> 
All right, well, that's going to do it for us this week. And be sure to share, like, and subscribe on Health with Houston Methodist wherever you get your podcasts. If you enjoyed this conversation, for more topics like this, visit our blog at houstonmethodist.org slash blog. Stay tuned and stay healthy. Houston Methodist Hospital has been named the best hospital in Texas for 11 years in a row by U.S. News and World Report. Houston Methodist Hospital is the number one hospital in Texas and number 15 in the nation. We are nationally ranked in 10 specialties, the most in the state. For more than 100 years, we have provided you the best and safest clinical care, advanced technology, and patient experience. That's our promise of leading medicine. Houston Methodist, leading medicine.